Hey guys, so there are certain downsides to daily driving a mini monster truck. And since I'm on the highway so much these days, I thought it was time to do the mature thing and get something that's fuel efficient and good on the highway. Not again. So despite what the title said, I'm actually not getting rid of the FJ. I've just added yet another four wheel drive to the fleet that's gonna get big tires and lifted. I seem to have this strange addiction to these things. <laughs> Anyways, this is a 2023 Wild Track four door hardtop. Uh, that means that it comes with a 2.7 liter turbocharged V6 and it's got underneath the Fox Haas 3.0 suspension and the Bronco Raptor steering rack. That's an upgrade that comes on the wild track now and is a big re reason why I purchased this model. Um, as you can see, it comes on the 35s. It gets the whole Sasquatch package as standard. So front and rear lockers, that uh, turn assist, it's got all of that. And I'll just show you a little bit inside. This is just my quick first few uh, thoughts um, from just having it. Inside, I've got tan and black leather. I also really like how on this model, the accent color is this blue versus some which is I think orange or yellow. Um, it definitely has a lot more tech to it than the FJ, which the FJ has its own charm without having any screens basically at all. But uh, it will be nice to play around with some of these new features as well as all of the off-road features. Um, right now it is fully stock. The one thing that I had the dealership add were some all weather mats, They're the Ford ones. Um, I've had experience with some of their mats and Ford vehicles in the past and they've done well. So I just thought I'd add them straight from the get go so that I don't get mud or other stuff on the carpet. I really wish I could say that I was here today to pick this up. They happen to have a Raptor R press vehicle on their lot here at Universal Ford in Calgary right now. So I got, I've been able to go inside, take a look at it, listen to it. It's pretty phenomenal. So I wish I was here for this, but the Bronco in itself is quite phenomenal. No V8, but we're gonna take it out for my first drive of this exact Bronco. I've driven a few over the last couple of years. Um, I saw one right as they first came out, but it will be my first time actually driving my Bronco. Okay, so first drive, I'm gonna be gentle on it because it's a new vehicle. Um, but few key things to this model, it comes with like the auxiliary switches that are optional on some of the other trims. Um, the thing I immediately find a little boring is the steering wheel uh, coming from the FJ's carbon leather wrap one. Okay, I actually I quite like the seat. I'm very glad because I haven't spent an extended period of time in a Bronco. So I'm glad that I like the seat. I downside to them is there are no cooled seats in, in Broncos. Uh, so if I could have optioned cool seats, I would have because right now the seat is quite warm because it's quite hot outside, but at least the air conditioning is ice cold. Um, other things I like, I mean, I guess this isn't really interior, but, um, already I can feel there's a lot of torque. I'm driving very gently, but I can tell there's a lot of torque. Um, and then I do like how the, uh, kind of tan color ties through the whole dash, the door panels, everything. It kind of reminds me of the FJ in that way, because the FJ brings the body color inside. This isn't the body color of this Bronco, but it's kind of nice to have, um, the theme just tied through the whole interior. It's funny because these mirrors are not as tall as the FJ1, but they're kind of that same square shape. So um, there are some things that almost already feel familiar, even though it's a brand new vehicle and brand new platform. It corners quite well. Um, so does the FJ though, because it's still got sway bars, but it's just nice to know that this one does, does too. And the Fox suspension rides really nicely. I'm going to do preload collars. Um, the front I think is going to go up about just over two inches and the back just under two inches to level it out. So while waiting to make this turn, I'm going to make a comment that's going to piss off all the Bronco book people and all the Jeep people at the same time. It kind of reminds me of a JL Wrangler in some ways. I mean, you get the short dash with the fairly upright windshield. So like that's just inherently similar, but they both have character to drive, which a lot of cars these days just don't have character. Um, and that's what I find boring with just so many crossovers, especially and just things that are tuned for fuel economy. There's just not much character left. So the FJ had character. Um, the Jeep has character. 
and this has character. So that kind of ties them all together in a way. So no, are they the exact same? No, but they definitely share some interior cues. The one thing I will say is I drove a loaded um, JL Rubicon. So one of the fairly new ones. I mean, this is going back like a year. And from what I remember, there were a few nicer materials in that interior. And I think the sound system was better than the one here in the Bronco. I was just testing it. Um, so those might be advantage of the Jeep. I will say this does handle better than the Jeep does. Um, we were kind of ripping around a couple corners for fun. Um, but yeah, so not to upset everybody, but it does kind of remind me of a JL in some ways. Now, I mentioned the materials being not the nicest in this. Some are. As I mentioned, I really like the seats, but the whole dash is hard plastic. So where you put your arm, at least they put soft touch materials, so that's nice. But there definitely are some subpar materials. Um, I do think it's cool that Ford includes uh, a badge here telling you what plant it was made in, in, the, in Michigan. Um, so I think that's cool. I like the grab handles. Let's see. I don't know how that relates. Can you do that one? Yeah. There we go. Oh I don't think I'll actually leave it off, but that's the first time. No, you gotta, off. Well, it could rain. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, rain. I'm sitting here. I'm stuck. I need help. <laughs> I've been peer pressured into peeling the plastic off the screen. So here goes. So personal thoughts. I'm not the biggest fan of screens. I'm not the most tech enthusiastic person, but I do like how this setup is at least nicely put into the dash. I've seen some modern vehicles and it looks like an iPad's just been pasted over top. So I do appreciate that Ford did a nice job with that. Funny thing, I don't actually have um, a GPS built into uh, my Bronco. When I was ordering it, they said, there's a chance that you'll get it quicker if you don't get the navigation in it. And I said, oh, well, I'll just use my phone for navigation anyways. That's what people do. So I ordered it so that it could be either way. It was kind of whichever way would come quicker. So I actually, I don't have navigation in my Bronco, which to me is not a problem at all, but it's just a funny thing from the time when I put in my order, that was what they uh, had told me I could do to make it come just a little bit quicker. Other than that, uh, there's lots of different modes. I know it's got the GOAT modes, which are, I think the off-road modes, then it's got the regular modes, which are, you know, sport, um, eco, I don't know. Those there's probably a towing mode in here. There's a snow mode, looks like. Yeah, snow mode. Uh, then you start getting to some of the off-road ones. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to leave it in normal, especially during the break-in a bit. Um, and then one feature I really like. So uh, the automatic FJs are just two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, the standard four-wheel drive system. Um, I really like the full-time four-wheel drive system that the manual FJs got or a bunch of other Toyota Lexus products get. Um, and Ford has their own version, which is the four wheel drive auto and the Bronco comes with that. So when you put it in here, I think it probably automatically will just send power to the front when it slips, it might already split that. I haven't looked into exactly how it divides your power when you're already in four auto. Um, and then you've got four high and four low, but for winter driving, there's a lot of times in the FJ where, uh, it's just a pain having to go from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. You stay in two wheel drive and then it starts getting icy or you're in four wheel drive and then you get into like a cleared parking lot and it starts to, uh, you know, do the little hop cause it's binding cause you have traction. So having a four wheel drive auto mode for me was a big uh, plus to the Bronco. So I'm excited to try that in the winter just for kind of daily driving. Um, other than that, I really like that there's still buttons for the key things for all of your climate control uh, stuff. I mean, now I see there's even a camera button so I can turn on the camera. This is pretty crazy because I'm used to, in the FJ, there's the little chiclet sized camera in the rear mirror. Uh, so this is this is completely different um, from that. And I wonder if, no, it just gives you the one view. I was wondering, well, actually who knows? Okay, front camera, all the front cameras, that is trippy because that, wow, I would not want to drive with that. That's, that's okay. That's pretty cool. Some of the stuff I'm seeing for the first time, parking sensors, FJ doesn't have them. Uh, it's nice they put a button here because off-road, I know parking sensors can be a pain. Some cars don't let you turn them off. Some cars do automatically turn them off when you go into like four low. Um, but just having this button easily accessible is really nice because some cars you have to go into a screen or something to deal with that. So that should make it so that they aren't a pain off-road. I'm um, just trying to think if there's anything else. 
It's got auto lights and everything. Uh, so basically it just adds a lot of tech and features that I haven't had um, in the FJ up to this point. The Land Rover has more despite being a little bit older, um, but this I think will have by far the most. Okay, so I just, I'm gonna wrap up this video here. I just wanna give you kind of my first drive experience, uh, my few thoughts on it and just show you what I got. Um, least favorite thing so far, I don't know why Ford does these cheap looking stickers. Like it looks like it should be a magnet, but sadly it's not. Um, I'll have to peel that off. But uh, I mean, actually, okay, it does have a Sasquatch on it. So it's not like a bad sticker. It just, it doesn't look great. I wish it was some nice thing. It also has the hood decal, but I actually, I don't mind that at all. So anyways, this is my new Bronco. It's uh, not gonna stay stock for very long. I'm gonna get some paint protection film done on it before anything else, cause I don't wanna chip up this nice carbonized gray paint. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to uh, show you guys what I'm going to do to it. So till next time.